Hello and welcome to this tutorial. I'm Antonio Papa from scalablescripts.com and in this tutorial we will create a microservices example using Python and React. Let's start by understanding what is a monolith and what are microservices. A monolith can be a large code base that has a lot of functionalities and is connected with a single big database. In this example that I'm showing you, you can think this as an e-commerce site. We have a, a search functionality that has a lot of traffic. We have a product list, which uh, are cached. We have a product re recommendation functionality, we, which we can use machine learning to recommend different products. And we have a contact page where we have uh, less traffic there. The problem with this architecture is if we want to scale this up because the search has a lot of traffic we have to replicate all the functionalities so we are replicating also the parts of the code that has no traffic like the contact page also since it is one repository there can be only one language and uh, you can cause other problems with other teams if we ch if you change their code since there is only one repository now what are microservices? Microservices are smaller independent services that have their own database and they can communicate with each other using an event bus. So in our example we will have four microservices all have their own database and they will communicate with each other via messages. The advantages in this case are that we can uh, scale the applications based on the traffic so if we see the search microservice, we scaled that microservice four times compared to the contact where we have only one instance of the contact microservice. Another advantage is the separation of concerns. Now the product recommendation team can only focus on machine learning and not scaling up the application. Also, each team can use a different programming language based on their needs. Now let's jump to the application that we will build. In this example we will build a simple microservices example using Python. The frontend of this app will be built with Angular, React, Vue and Svelte. You can pick your favorite there. The backend is composed into two apps, an admin app and the main app. The admin app will be built using Django and the main app will be built using Flask. Both will run in Docker and will connect with their own database in MySQL. They will communicate with each other using RabbitMQ events and in one case the main app will internally call the admin app. Now let's see what this app looks like. So this is the app that we will build. It's a simple app where this is the admin and this is the main app. In the main app we can like the products and in the admin app we can create the products. It is very simple but don't get deceived because it, it has two backend apps with different database communicating with RabbitMQ which I open it on my right side. So let's see an example for example. I will like this product here and when I like the product, you will see an event happening in RabbitMQ right now. So the event has been triggered here. And uh, we have one ready event and uh, now is zero. So it means it was consumed. So if we see here, let's refresh the admin. We can see that uh, we got another like here. So in essence it's really simple but uh, uh, this like has more functionality to it since it will internally call also the admin to get a random user and uh, if we happen to like with uh, the same uh, user it will throw an error. We can also create a new product. So let's create a product and I will add a sample image. Uh, we will see that uh, RabbitMQ will trigger another event. So this is a product that we created. Another event has been fired. 
and uh, when it's consumed here uh, we will see the product here so it seems that uh, the product is on the admin app on the main app so we got the product so we will see how this app will work by building them so let's start creating uh, the apps so let's start building the admin app using django rest framework to create the project go to tutorial quick start and these are the commands to create a simple django project you have to install django and django rest framework from pip i already did it so i can directly go to the terminal and write django admin start project admin and the project is created i can go to the folder now and run python 3 manage.py run server so the project is running now and i can copy this url and paste it to the browser and we can see that uh, we successfully installed the django project now let's open the project with our ide and this is the app that we just generated now let's run docker so let's create two files one is docker file and the other one is docker compose dot yaml file so let's open the docker file first and uh, what we will write here is first from what type of project is this so we want to get it from python and we have to specify the version of python i will pick the latest one which is 3.9 next we will add an environment variable python and buffered one because uh, this is uh, useful to get logs so we can see what error is happening and uh, now we have to specify a working directory i will call it just app so before going further i will create uh, requirements .txt file so in this file we can put all the dependencies that we will use in our app so i will paste them here we will use django django rest framework mysql client and django mysql so we will connect with mysql django course headers this is needed for the front end to access uh, the backend and pika this is useful when we will connect with uh, rabbitmq now that we added our requirements let's go to the docker file and we will copy requirements.txt to app let's copy the name here requirements.txt so we are copying this file to the work to the working directory requirements so we are copying inside the docker container and now we have to install it so we have to run a command pip install minus r requirements so I'll paste it so this will install all these requirements and in the end we will copy all the files so dot slash up dot in this case means all the files here so we are copying all the files to the app directory the last command is running the project so we have to add here python manage.py run server and we also need to specify the host so the host will be 0.0.0.0 with port 8000 so we have to use it this way otherwise we cannot connect uh, the port with uh, our local host now let's go to our docker compose file here we have to start by adding the version the latest version of docker compose is 3.8 and then we have to specify the services so for the moment i will just add the backend service which is uh, our app here first we have to specify the docker file so build we have to put here 
context, which, which is this folder, and the Docker file, which is Docker file. So basically, this means that this Docker Compose file should use this Docker file. So that's it. Next, we need to specify a port here. So this port that is running here is inside the Docker container, is not our local host. So we have to tell uh, our local host to listen to a specific port. So in my case, this is the Docker file port and this is our local host port. So if we don't use this, we won't be able to access uh, the server. And the last change is the uh, volumes. So add here volumes and inside we will specify dot column slash up. This means that uh, dot means all the files here are connected with the Docker container. Every time we make a change in the app, it will pass it to the slash to the Docker file app. And the opposite, if a change happens in the Docker file, it will reflect it here. So that's it. This is our app. Now we have to start it. First, we have to stop the server here and open the terminal and write docker compose app. Now it's building the backend, it's downloading all the required libraries for Python and it will also install all the requirements here. Let's wait till it's completed. So now everything is running correctly. We can see that uh, the de development server is running and also we stopped uh, the server from this uh, terminal and if we refresh now we'll see we'll get the same page. Now this is running from the docker container. If we stop for example we won't be able to see it so now we don't see it. If I start again now it will be much more faster so we can see it. So this is how you connect Django with Docker. Now we have to connect with the database. We already have an SQL Lite database here, but we will remove it because uh, we will be using MySQL. So the first thing we have to add the MySQL service. I will call it DB and here I will add an image, which is MySQL version 5.7.22. So we added uh, MySQL, next we have to res add restart always. So we have to add this command because uh, sometimes MySQL stops and this will stop also our, our Docker container and our app is not, will not run. So this will restart it again. N next we have to add some environment variables. So these are some uh, environment variables that we will connect with our backend. So we have to add MySQL database, which is admin, MySQL user, root, MySQL password, I will also put root here, and MySQL root password, root. So these values, you can uh, pick whatever values you want. So you can specify them here. Next, we have to add volumes. So this is really important. So MySQL, when, we store, when it stores data, it needs to map them to a folder. So I will create a folder here, DB data, which will map var lib MySQL. So all the files here will be reflected to a folder here called dbdata. So we will see it once we start this uh, container. So we are finished. Now we have to add here ports. This is not uh, required at all. Uh, I will just add it so we can see the data inside the database. So the port will be the default port for MySQL is 3306 and this is inside the Docker container. Outside 
we will use 33066 or whatever port we want. Uh, I didn't put the same port because it will conflict with my MySQL installation. So that's it. The last change is we should add here depends on DB. This means that uh, this container should run first and then this container should run. Now let's close it and start it again. Now it's pulling my SQL. So we can see now the database is running. So we can also see a DB data folder here. So these are the files that uh, when we store anything, it will be reflected here. We don't have to touch this uh, folder. So this is just there to stay. Now let's connect with our IDE. So we need a new data source MySQL and our port was 33066. Root for the user, root for the password and the database was admin. Let's test if we connect. So we connected successfully. Now we have only one schema with no tables. So now let's add some tables to the database. First, we have to create a new app. So we have to go inside the Docker container now. So to go inside the Docker container, open a new terminal and write docker compose exec. Now we need the name of the service, which in our case is backend. Backend sh. We are inside now and now let's run a, a Django command to create a new app. So Python manage.py startup products. So we created the app. We can see here the products is created and we run the command inside the Docker container. Now let's uh, go to admin and we need to connect. Uh, we need to add these products to the installed apps. First, we have to add here REST framework. Next, we have to add here course headers and the products that we just created. Our course headers needs also a middleware. So this is a middleware that we need to add. And also it needs a new constant. I will add it here in the end. Course origin allow all. So we added everything we need. Now we need to connect with MySQL. Here we have to change this SQL Lite to MySQL. The name of uh, the database would be admin. Next we have to add the user, which is root, the password, which is also root, the host, the host is no, in our case will be this service here. So just DB db and the port and uh, in this case we won't be using this port but we will use the port inside this service so is 3306 so i 3306 so this is our connection with mysql we can remove again this sql light here and uh, let's restart Again, the Docker containers. Now we have to run migrations to create uh, tables in MySQL. So let's go to the products and models. So we will create two models here. The first one is product. This will extend from models model. And we will add the fields for the product that we need. Title, which is models uh, char field with a max length of 200. Let's do the same for the image. And we need another field, which is likes. This will be a positive integer field. 
and the default value will be zero. So this is our product and uh, we need another table now. I'll call it user models model. So we won't be really using the user table. We will just use the user ID. So I'll just pass. So with this, this table will have only the ID field and the product will have the ID and uh, these other three fields. So now we have the models. We need to generate migrations for these models and we have to migrate. So open the terminal. Let's go in inside the Docker container again. And here we have to write python manage.py make migrations. So we can see we generated migrations. These are the migrations that uh, we generated. And to run them, run python make man manage.py migrate. So we run all the migrations. If we open the database now and refresh, we'll see a bunch of tables. We won't be using all these tables. The only two tables that we are interested in is the products, which we have title, image, and likes and the user which has only the ID field. So this is how we connect Django with MySQL and we run migrations. So we created our models and now Django, when we return the objects in an API, we need to use serializers. So now I'll create a folder, a file here, sorry, serializers. And inside I will create a class product serializer this will extend from serializers so let's import it first from rest framework import serializers and this will extend from serializers dot model serializer so inside we'll add another class which is meta and uh, we have to tell which is the model. In our case, is the product. Let's import the product here. So I will remove this. So we said that the product is a model, and now we have to specify the fields. And I will use all of them. So this is our serializer is very simple. We won't be using a serializer for the user since uh, we will return a random ID there. Now let's go to the views and now we will use the serializer. So here we will create all the five methods for REST API CRUD. So there are multiple ways to do it. In my case, I will use a view set. So from, so I will, remove the render from Django, so REST framework, sorry, import view set. And uh, what we'll do with this view set is we'll create a class product view set. This will extend from view sets, view set. So this will have uh, five methods that we want. So I will add here list this will be the list of uh, the products so i will list them one by one so this needs a request so i will add here create self request also so these are for uh, slash products route for slash product slash so i will write it here this is are for uh, I will add a comment slash API slash products route. I will add pass here so it won't throw an error. So this will have a get request. This will have a post request. Now there are other endpoints that we will use, which is def retrieve. 
in itself request and the primary key which is none by default and this will be like this so I will add it string id and I will pass it here so there are three uh, methods for a single product one is retrieve the other one is update and uh, the last one is delete so these are all the five methods now I will remove the this part so to use these uh, methods we have to add here a new file urls I'll copy the same uh, code from uh, this admin urls here I'll paste it here and uh, here we will use products I'll remove the slash and uh, what is this next parameter it will be product view set let's import it from views we have to edit here as a view but uh, we still need extra parameters we have to tell that the get method will uh, point to the list function so as we can see here we have a list and the get method will point to the, this list function the post method will point to the create function and uh, we have to add another route right now for product slash the it needs a string which is the primary key and this get method now we will call the retrieve function uh, we don't have a post we have a put here this will point to update and delete will point to destroy so I made a mistake this is destroy here so now all the methods are here now let's use them first let's add the list of the products so first let's get the products we have to get the product here objects all of them let's import this product from models so we got all the products now we need to use the serializer we just created so serializer is equal to product serializer let's also import it so imported product serializer here the first parameter is the product and we need another parameter here we have to tell that many is equal to true so we have uh, this is a list of the products and uh, it needs to return a, an array now that we got the serializer we need to return response with serializer.data let's import also the response here from uh, rest framework response so this is the uh, import so this is our list function let's see how it looks like so I open postman here you have to install it to test uh, the APIs here I will use HTTP localhost port 8000 slash uh, I forgot also one other thing so we added the routes here I also need to add them here first let's import from Django URL here uh, we will import include and uh, let's add the new path which will start with API we will add a slash here and we will include here our project which is products so this project dot URLs which is this file now that we included it now we can use it here is api slash products and uh, normally we don't have any 
product so it will return an empty array now let's add the next uh, function which is create here we'll get the serializer which is equal to product serializer and we have to pass the data from the request so data is equal to request the data so we will use those data and uh, we have to first uh, call is valid so if uh, we send valid data to this serializer if not we will raise an exception and if it's valid it means we will go to this line it means we will save it after we save it we return the response so response serializer.data and we have to put a status here so we'll import from status let's import status so I don't remember the exact import here but we will use status is equal to status dot http 201 created let's import this status so it's from a rest framework we'll import status here now let's use it so we will change this from get to post and we will send some from json here we'll send uh, some request we need the title title and an image which is image let's send the request and we return the title notice that we get also the likes here by default is zero we got also an id so our first product is created if we go to the get uh, method now we'll see an array with uh, one product so this is the create function the retrieve is really simple we have to get the product which is equal product objects get the id is equal to this primary key now that we got the product we have to get the serializer is equal to product serializer with the product and we have to return in response serializer.data let's use it so this has id1 so if we put a get request with id1 we return a single object products returns an array of objects now let's go to the update let's copy this part i'll put it to the update and also destroy because we will use the object there so we'll get the serializer here is equal to product serializer we have to pass the instance which is this product so the instance is a product with uh, the data that it has and we have to update it with a new data which we will get it from the request that data so this is the project that the product that we have and these are the data that we want to update it now we have to do the same thing we have to ask if the serializer is valid then we have to save in the end we'll return a response with the serializer that data and we have to change the status which is 202 accepted so let's change uh, product with id1 we'll send a boot request here and uh, this is new title and the new image send the request and we can see that uh, these values are changed now also the status is 202 accepted the last change is destroying the object this is really simple we have to call product delete and that's it so we have to return here a response with a status status http 204 no content so let's delete this product send the request 
and uh, we have 204 no content we don't have a product and if we go to the products uh, not delete method so we have still an empty array now here now the last call that we need is the user's call so we'll create another class here user api view so i will not use a view set now i will use an api view api view here so let's import it from rest from framework views we will import api view and this will be really simple we need the to define the get function and uh, we need the parameter here which is a request which we won't use it I will put an underscore here we have to get the users users user sorry objects all so let's import also user from the models so we imported it here now we got the user we have to get a random user so here I will import random to get a random user is equal to random choice users and this will be a random user now let's return the ID response ID is user.id so this is the user so let's add it also to the urls the path will be user and we have to import it here user api view user api view here as view so let's test this uh, route so this will be a get request to the user uh, this returns an error because we don't have any users in the database so I will manually add here some values so I'll add here one two three four and five so I'll add five users or five numbers now let's send the request again and I get five if I send it again it's four so the result is randomized so this was our main app now we have to create another app so we can communicate it so that the other app will be a flask app now it's time to create the main app and i decided to make it with flask so i created a main folder and inside i created an empty main.py file so let's start first i'll paste here the requirements that we need so we need to install flask flask sql alchemy sql alchemy flask migrate flask scripts flask course request mysql client and pika so there are a lot of uh, uh, requirements that we need and uh, now we will go to the other project and i will copy the docker files here and paste them here so the docker file will be the same here except for the command which will be simpler just python main dot pi so this will be the docker file the docker compose file for mysql it will be the same except this will be a new port i'll put seven here and i will change the database name to main uh, there is no need to change the database name because uh, this is another container but uh, we changed it so the port f the default port for flask will be 5000 and uh, 8000 is occupied with uh, the django app so i will use 8001 here and that's it so the docker files are completed now let's create a flask app here so from flask import flask let's create the app is equal to flask name here 
So let's start a basic app. So here I will add new route, app, route. So just slash. I will create a function, index. And here I will return just hello. So let's see if uh, this works. So I need to add a condition if name is equal to main, then up run with debug is equal to true. We also need the host, so the host will be 0 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. So that's it. Now let's try to run it without the Docker container. Python 3 main.py. So we got this port. Let's copy it and uh, open a new tab in Postman. So we have an error. So is hello. Not sure why it throwed an error. Now let's do the same but uh, this time with docker. So we have all the requirements, we don't need to change anything. So let's start docker compose up and let's wait till it's completed. So it's finished. We can see a DB data folder here and uh, let's test it. Now the port will not be 5000 because this will be inside the Docker container. The port will be 8001. So here I will change it with localhost port 8001 and that's it. So we can see hello now. So Docker is working. Now let's add MySQL to this main.py file. So let's uh, import SQL Alchemy. So from Flask SQL Alchemy, import SQL Alchemy. And we need to use it here. So app config. And we need to set a constant, so is SQL alchemy underscore database underscore URI. So with this, we'll add the DB connection. And uh, what we need is to add MySQL here. And uh, here we need to add the user and the password. So root root in our case at now we need the host the host will be the service here which is db so the host will be db and in the end will be the table which is main so with this we can connect to this database uh, i will add also of course here since uh, the front end will need it so let's import it from flask course we'll add it to the app and uh, now the database is equal to sql alchemy and here we'll pass the app now let's create two models that we need so class product this will extend from db model and uh, let's add all the required uh, properties for the product we need the id which is uh, a db column db integer and also is a primary key now we have to make another change for the id here we will add here auto increment to false. Why did I add this field? Because uh, the product will not be created in this app. The product will be created in uh, the Django app. 
and uh, this app will just catch the event from RabbitMQ and it will create the product. And when we create the product, we don't want the ID to be auto increment because uh, the ID will be different than the, the Django app. So if we want the same ID, we have to put it auto increment to false and uh, to insert directly the ID as it is from the Django app. So we'll see it by example a, li a little bit later. Now let's add the title. db column db string and this will be a 200 character let's do the same for the image so this is a product notice that uh, this product will be different than the product from uh, the other app because we don't have likes here and the ID is different, so we can you, we can think this as a different type of uh, the same thing. Let's add also another class that we need, each, which is product user from DB model. So this will have an ID, which is a column db integer primary key to true so this will increment normally we need here the user id which is a db column db integer and the same for the product id We need also a unique constraint for user ID, product ID, and uh, we need to set the name, which is a user product unique. So this unique constraint so let's import it from uh, sql alchemy from here so this unique constraint will make sure that uh, the combination of user id and product id should be unique we should not repeat it so we created the models that we will use now we need to migrate so to migrate i will create a new file here i will call it manager and now here we need some uh, imports so first from the main app we need to import app and db we need to import from flask migrate we need to import migrate and migrate command and from flask script we need to import manager now migrate will be equal to migrate with uh, our app and our db here then we have to get to, to the manager so manager is equal to manager we need to pass the app inside and the manager will add the command db will add the migrate command here so we will have a db command to run our migrations so we will see it now that we will add the if name is equal to main so we need to add manager run and that's it so if we open the terminal now and uh, open a new tab we'll run here docker compose exec backend sh and now we are inside the docker container now if we run python manager.py and uh, we will run the command db so we added the command here with help we can see 
now that we have a command that we can uh, run. Now let's migrate. So to migrate we have to run python manager.py db init. So we created uh, some migration files. We can see them here. Now we need to migrate them. So now run python manage.py db migrate. So uh, it should be python manager.py db migrate. So we created a new table. If we open the database, now we'll connect with the database. So this is, will be seven here. The user is root, password is also root, and the database will be main. So let's connect. We'll see a database now with a emblemic version, but we won't see our tables because we need to run another command for it, which is Python manage that manager sorry that pi db upgrade and now we run the migration if we refresh we will see the table so this is a product table and this is a product user table so this is how we connect flask with mysql using docker now it's time to use RabbitMQ to our Python apps. So I will use this service, Cloud AMPQ. And uh, you have to create a free account. This is the free account. I already have created so I can log in. So this is my free account. And uh, what I will do here is this AMPQ URL. I will just copy it. And now I can move to the app. So I will go to the Django app and uh, in the products here I will create a python file producer and uh, for the moment I will just copy this URL. Now let's send an event to RabbitMQ. So first we have to import pika. This is a package that uh, will help us send events and let's create a variable params is equal to pika url parameters and here we can put the url that we just pasted here as a string so we created the params this is annoying the connection now is equal to pika blocking connection and we will pass the params here. So we created the connection with RabbitMQ. Now we have to create the channel which is equal to connection channel. So with this we uh, created the channel now we can publish. So to publish I will create a function publish. Inside I will put a method and the body. So for the moment I will just keep it empty so we can uh, see an example of the publish method. So channel here basic publish we need to put an exchange I will put an empty string routing key this is a queue that we want to send the event so for the moment I will put it admin so I will publish it in the same queue as this one. Uh, we, de hit, we need the body, which is for the moment hello. So that's it. We can uh, use this publish function now. I will use it in the views. When we list the products, I'll just publish here. So I imported the function and uh, when we retrieve all the products we will publish hello. 
now we created the producer now we need to create the consumer so here we need to create the consumer so the beginning is the same let's copy everything from uh, the, con the producer paste it here and now we have to declare a queue so channel queue declare and the queue will be admin so now we need the callback so callback this accepts a channel as a parameter method properties and body let's pass for the moment after the callback we have to call channel basic consume here we have to pass the queue which is admin and we have to pass on message callback which is this callback that we just created so we are basically consuming now we can print started consuming since we want to have a message to see if uh, we started consuming and the uh, channel start consuming so with this in the end we'll close it so channel close so we basically have finished now let's uh, print a message also to know if uh, we received a message so print here Re receive in admin so we received a message and i will print the body here if we got a hello there so that's it now let's try to open the terminal go to the docker file so docker compose exec backend sh here we have to call consumer.py so python consumer.py so we received these uh, messages because i already sent some test events now let's test it let's go to the route for the products and we can expect when we get the products here to send an event hello there send we can we can see now we received an event hello now let's consume to the flask app so what i will do is copy this consumer file go to the flask app and here i will paste the consumer so everything is the same except uh, the queue here will be uh, main so we are done now i can so i can uh, start it with pub python consumer dot pi so we started consuming and uh, in the producer here i will change the uh, routing key to main so now i will not publish here in the admin app but i will publish here in the main app so let's see if uh, this makes any difference let's send the event we can see hello here was from before but uh, this received the hello now so to see the difference hello main i, I will say hello main so let's send it again we don't see a hello main here but we will see it here so this is how we send events to different apps using pika and rabbitmq now we successfully uh, connected with rabbitmq and we started consuming uh, with uh, both apps now we don't want to have all the time two tabs here to start the consumer so we'll change the docker compose file now first let's change the docker file we will cut this command here 
and uh, we will add it directly here. So when we build, we'll execute the command that we just cut. So this is basically the same as before. We run the command here, but now we are running it here. We did that because we will create another container now. So is Q, I will call it, which will have the same Docker file. And the, the difference now is we will start a command now. And the command will be python consumer.py. So we will run uh, the command directly here instead of uh, manually running it every time. This also depends on the database because we will uh, insert data later. So let's do the same for the flask app. So I will paste the queue here. So this file is the same. So the difference now is I will cut this command here and I will put it here command Python main API so now let's restart all the containers so I will run docker compose app build now we don't need uh, the other tab Let's do the same for this also. Let's remove this tab and we will build all the containers. Now we are building the queue. So as we can see, we are getting uh, the queue. So the queue is here. So one other thing that we can make is by running it like this. So docker compose app minus D for the database so d means uh, we won't see the logs let's do the same for the backend or for the backend and the queue we need uh, to see the logs so now we are seeing the logs from the queue and from the backend let's do the same here so minus d here db and docker compose up now let's see if this works so we are at the products here let's send the request again we won't see it here but we should see it here also another change that we have to make if we close our containers and run them again we'll notice so if i do it with the database like this and the others docker compose up you will notice that uh, i will still get uh, the queues but uh, they they are not consumed yet so there is one last change that we have to add it in our consumer and uh, here we have to add auto act true so with this we will uh, consume the calls and uh, we will not uh, get them again so let's do the same for the other consumer and uh, let's restart the containers again with build also this one with build so they are rebuilt now if we do the same with uh, the database and uh, we start the other apps we will see that the queue started consuming but uh, we cannot see anything here so that's it now uh, with uh, these changes consuming becomes easier now we want to send events every time a product is created updated or deleted so we have to change this publish method we will add here a method and the body so for the method we have to create a variable properties which is equal to pika basic properties and here we will pass a method 
and uh, here we'll pass uh, the properties is equal to properties also for the body so we need to import json here and the body will be json dumps body so we will send objects or anything but we have to convert it to json before we send it so this is our publish function now let's use it to our views let's remove this publish here and now when we create we will publish product created and we will send the serializer the data let's do the same for product updated product updated and for the product deleted now instead of the object we'll send directly the primary key so these are the main events that we want to send and now let's make changes to the flask app here we have to get the data which is equal to json so i will import json here json loads body so uh, in the django app we will convert it to json so now we will conv convert it back let's print it so we can see what data are we sending and now we'll make the condition if properties content type is equal to product created we'll create the project so the product sorry so the product is equal to product with an id data id here title so let's import also this product here is equal to data title and image is equal to data image in the end let's import also the db db session add product and db session commit so this is how you create a, uh, an object in, with sql alchemy now let's do the same for the other conditions so properties content type product updated so now we will get the product is equal to product query get data with an id and we have to change this product so product title is equal to data with the title and the image so image here in the end we will call session commit the last change is deleting so properties content type product deleted and in this case we'll get the product like this but uh, we don't send an object we send directly the id so this data is the id we have to do it like this now D db session delete product and db session commit so these are all the three cases that uh, we will receive uh, from the other app now let's see if they work but before we should uh, restart our containers just to be sure so build so there is no need to restart this one but just le let's do it to be sure so this is started 
and now we have the products here which we don't have any let's create a product here I will send some data title is a title here and the image an image let's send the request so we successfully created pro the product in uh, the Django app but let's see if we created it in the uh, uh, Flask app so we received the queue we probably forgot we should add here some uh, print statements like uh, product created product updated and product deleted but doesn't matter let's see the database and we can see this is the product now so we successfully created the product from an event from RabbitMQ now let's try to update it so this product will put, send a put, put request with a new title and a new image so I will not save it let's send the request this is updated and uh, if we see the event we got uh, the new title and the new image we don't uh, see the print that we just added it because we have to rebuild the containers now we just check in the database which is correct and now let's try to delete it and uh, this is received and if we refresh here we can see we have no product so now the databases for the product are in sync from the Django app and for the Flask app so we completed the Django app now let's finish the Flask app since uh, we have only one route here so let's change this route to just API slash products and here we'll return a list of products so let's import JSONify from Flask here and we will return JSONify product query all so let's see if this works so let's see if this works so the endpoint is API slash products and we got uh, one product let's create one product here so we can see it if it works so we got this product that we just created so we should see it in the database notice that the ID is 3 so when we created this product we don't start with one but the ID that we have it on our, our Django app now let's send the request and we get an error because object of type product is not JSON serializable to fix this error we have to add here at data class and let's import it from data classes so with this now the class will be JSON serializable let's do the same for the product user send the request again and uh, we got an empty object but uh, we want to see the data which we got ID title and image here to do it we have to redeclare it here ID should be an int title should be a string str so and image should be a string with these changes now we can uh, see the ID image and uh, the title so with this we completed the main route now let's add another route so I'll call it like and this will have up route 
API products we need the ID of the product which is an integer the ID and we have to like it so this is the endpoint the method is a post request and uh, when we like we will send an ID here so how do we like the product so now it's a little bit complicated we have to internally call uh, the Django app so we have to internally call this user API view here to get a random ID and uh, we have to assign it to the product user so first we have to uh, create a variable I will call it rec and this will call requests dot get let's import requests from so we import directly requests here and uh, now we have to get the endpoint so the endpoint is http localhost port 8000 slash api slash user and for the moment we will just return JSONify request JSON not sure if I need JSONify here but uh, let's try it so products with an ID 1 we need to like it let's send a post request send and we get an error connection refused so what is the error here the error is localhost here because right now we are inside the docker container and the localhost inside the docker container is 0, .0, .0. Uh, how to connect with another docker container localhost we have to specify here that this is docker for mac localhost so this is the way the docker knows that we are referring not to the container localhost but uh, another localhost so our local localhost so with this change let's try to send it again it seems uh, we the server stops so we probably need to restart it send it again and now we got id2 so this is the id from the user so this will be user here so not post get so this endpoint 8001 will call this other endpoint now that we got the response let's use it and create a product user so here we will get the json is request the json in the end if it is successful we will return a message success and uh, we will make a try accept here so what we will try is we will create a product user which is equal to product user with user id is equal to json id and uh, the product id is equal to the id that we just set this one from the url and now that we set this uh, product user we have to add it db session add product user and we have to commit and here we'll send an event which I will uh, send it later and if uh, an error happens the error is when the user tries to like again because this is a unique constraint if that happens we will abort let's import abort from flask abort 
we'll put 400 here and you already liked this product so a board we imported from from flask here so let's try it let's send the request again send success if we see the database product user we created one and it will happen that uh, we will fail it seems that uh, our unique constraint didn't work so I probably made a mistake here but I won't focus on that let's uh, finish uh, this up by sending an event now we need to get uh, the producer I will copy the same producer here so everything now is the same and uh, we have to use it here now if this is completed we have to add here producer so publish let's import it product liked and we have to pass the id of the product so let's we need to import it here so this is our uh, flask up only one thing that uh, i think is easy fixable now let's make the last change here on the consumer we will get the data here which is equal so let's import json json loads body let's print the data and uh, we here will like the product so we'll get the product first which is equal to product let's import it so from products models we'll import product that objects get id is equal to data so i will directly make this uh, an id so we got the id now product likes will equal to product likes plus one so we'll, we will increment it by one in the end we'll save it and we will print that uh, product is product likes increased just to be sure let's uh, rebuild the containers and uh, we will rebuild this too so this is completed now we have the products here so we have two products and uh, they have zero likes now for the product with an id 2 let's see if we have that uh, product in the main so three i guess so for the product with id 3 i will post here to like it and uh, this should uh, increase the likes so i guess we have an error received in main so my bad uh, when i made the producer i should change here the routing key should be admin so let's rebuild and uh, this should receive the event now let's like again not here here so this should not receive the event it didn't this did, re did receive the event actually we get an error here so uh, request a setting installed apps but settings are not configured this error happens because uh, this file is outside of django and we are using the product here and uh, to use the product regularly we have to 
load uh, so we have to set up Django before getting the product so we have to import here OS and Django we have to set uh, an environment variable Django sending settings module is equal to admin settings so these settings here and uh, we have to add Django setup here with this we won't have that error so let's rebuild the containers we can see now that we started consuming so let's try it again now we success let's send it again and we see the likes are increased here so we receive the event so now we are communicating back and forth with uh, both apps so this was uh, the app that I wanted to show now it's time to create the react frontend I'll create a react project with typescript so to create it write mpx create react app I will call it react crud and the template will be typescript let's wait till it's completed now the project is created we can go to the folder and run npm start now the project is running and if we open the browser we can see on localhost port 3000 we have our app running now let's open the project with our IDE and this is the project that we just created all the files are in TypeScript so I will remove the app.tsx file we won't be using uh, tests here in this tutorial and now let's add the template for this project so we don't use the default React template go to getbootstrap.com examples and uh, I will go to the dashboard here and get this template so let's view the page source and I will copy the HTML from uh, the body till the end so and I will paste it here so my ID is smart so all class now are have been converted to class name if your ID doesn't do that you make sure to do it yourself so I will remove all these TRs here because there are a lot and I will keep only one so I will keep only this we don't need the canvas we don't need the buttons so let's make some changes so we can remove this ul and h6 so this can be removed also so we can keep the dashboard and let's remove this span so let's make everything much simpler so we remove the li here so we have an error here also which is an error so the error is this input which we need to add a slash here and everything should be uh, correct now let's remove this logo here and uh, it will look ugly so if we see our app it looks very ugly because we need to add also the styles so here uh, we have the dashboard.css which we have to copy it and add it to our app CSS. Paste it here and now it will look a little bit better but we also need to add bootstrap so go to bootstrapcdn.com and here we need to copy the HTML link and add it to our index.html now that we added this link 
it will look much better so this is a template we will be using so let's ma make further changes so I'll create two components now this is the navigation so I will create a folder components inside I will create a new component I'll create it nav and will be TypeScript JSX file inside I will create a stateless react component and I will use this shortcut in my IDE so we need to import react from react we need to create our component as a constant and this is a function which we need to export it in the end here is the HTML so the HTML let's cut this part here and uh, paste it in our nav so let's replace it now that we replace the HTML we can use the component directly here so let's call it nav my ID auto imports uh, components so you should uh, import nav from components nav here and use it directly if we see the browser nothing will change let's create another component now which is the menu which is this one so let's do the same menu create the component and uh, let's cut the HTML actually the name here will not be dashboard will be products and let's use the menu in our app.tsx so that's it now everything looks much more simpler and uh, our component looks much better now we need to create more components for our app so we will have two main apps so one is the admin and the second one is the main app so first we will focus with the admin which is what we have been doing till now and then we will create the main app so inside the admin app we need to create the products component so let's create another component products let's let it be a jsx typescript file and uh, this component for html will have uh, the html of this table basically so let's cut it and let's uh, paste it uh, here so not that uh, react doesn't allow to have uh, two uh, html elements uh, nearby each other they all need to be wrapped inside a bigger one so this makes sense either that or I will just remove the section title so I will keep it much more cleaner this way now let's add these uh, products here so one way is to add directly the product here but uh, we don't want to do this because we will create more components which they will change here nav and menu will stay the same but this will change so uh, to fix this we have to uh, install another package which, which is react router dom so open the terminal and write npm install react router dom and types react router dom we need uh, this uh, second uh, package because uh, the first one is a javascript package and the second one is the typescript package so for all the typescript apps you need uh, uh, to do it this way now uh, react router dom is installed now we have to use it here so to map the products uh, via the router we have to import two packages 
So the first one is browser router and the second one is route, not router, route. So let's replace these products here and uh, inside we will add browser router. This is a container for all our routes and uh, let's add our first route which is uh, for the products. So uh, we have to specify a path. The path for the products will be admin slash products. And the second parameter we need to add the component, which in our case is the products. So that's it. So this is a path we can reference the products now. So Right now nothing is happening because we are at the main app. So if we go to admin slash products, we can see, we can see the table now. So this is working. Now let's add the main template. So let's go again to get bootstrap.com to the examples. And uh, this will be the template for our uh, main app. So let's copy the code from the body. So from here till here and uh, we have to create a new component for main. Main here. Let's create a component and here we'll paste the HTML we just cut. So Let's remove uh, most of the call MD4 here because uh, we don't need all of them. So we keep only one. Uh, we don't need uh, neither the jump tron here and neither the header. So we can remove the header. And this is almost what it will look like. So we will make changes later, but for now uh, I will remove also the SVG here. So for now, uh, let's uh, create a route for this. So the route for the main app will be route. the path will be the main path, so slash and the component will be the main component. Don't forget to import it. So if we go to the main component, now it will look. So first, uh, this is what the product component looks like, which is uh, weird and also if we go to the main page we can see this is uh, what the main component looks like but we don't want the navigation in the menu here so what is that we are um, making a mistake so first we need to remove the nav and menu from uh, this route so the only way to do it is by creating a new wrapper compo component for the admin. So let's do it. Let's create here a TypeScript file called wrapper. So uh, inside I will create a component and the HTML for that component will be this uh, nav and the uh, menu. So I will cut this part go to the wrapper and paste it here. So inside the div, let's also cut uh, what I left here and paste it. So this is now the wrapper component. So why do we need this component? So we have to use it directly in our products. So we can wrap this with the wrapper. So wrapper. And now in this component, we will use an 
uh, menu and nav. So we are having an error here because we are not using it correctly. Inside here we have to uh, use the child properties that we have. So we have to add here props. Uh, we are having an error also here because we are uh, using TypeScript. We have to specify a type which is props with children. Any. So these are the props that we have and to pass the child properties we have to use props children. This way uh, we will pass uh, the, the HTML inside here to the wrapper. And uh, if we go to the... This is the main uh, app now which looks much better. And if you, if you go to the admin slash products, still doesn't look good. Still we see this uh, main uh, uh, card. So what is the issue here? The issue is this slash. The problem with th this slash is that uh, they both have slash and React confuses them. And to solve that we have to use exact here. This means that uh, the path is exact here and uh, don't confuse it with the other uh, paths. With this uh, products will look uh, the same as before and uh, the main app will look uh, different. So this is how we use route. So let's remove nav and menu. We don't need it here. Actually these components which are nav and menu we have to move it to our admin because they belong there. Don't forget also to change uh, the imports here which my ID does it automatically. So now we got the admin, uh, the main app which we will use it later and now let's focus on our products uh, component. Now let's fill the table for the products. To fill the table first we have to get all the products and uh, to do it we have to use use effect and uh, inside accepts a function as a parameter and the second parameter will be an empty array. This uh, empty array means that uh, this will be called only once. If we put a variable that changes, uh, use effect will be called every time the variable changes. We'll see this later on. Now inside here we need to call our backend to get our data. So we cannot make this use effect asynchronous here. Uh, it doesn't accept it, so the way to do it is to create a function get products and this will be an asynchronous function and uh, in the end we will call it. So get products. This is a way to call asynchronous functions in uh, uh, React. But there is an even easier way. So we can remove uh, get products totally. So let's open a parenthesis here and uh, close the parenthesis uh, when we call it. So this is my preferred way of calling asynchronous functions in React. So open parenthesis, close parenthesis and then you call it directly. Here inside now let's call our backend. Let's get a response is equal to await fetch. The endpoint would be HTTP localhost port 8000 slash API slash products. Once we get the response we have to get the da data which is equal to await response JSON. So we got all the data so first let's console log it. And uh, inspect here. 
we will see that we get the products here and uh, the console log works so we got all the products now we have to get them and loop them to do it we have to use another react hook command which is use state so use state accepts a default uh, first parameter so a default value which is an empty uh, array for the products and uh, returns products as a variable and set products as a function so this work together with each other once we set the products these uh, products get set so set products will be used here data now we set the products it means this uh, variable has changed so we have to use that variable here let's use it so we have to map it so products map it will return a product that returns this HTML so the we need to add a key here so for every a loop that we have we have to have a key now we are having a type error here because we have to cast uh, the product here so we have to create a folder here interfaces and inside we will create a product interface so product not products but product Here we'll export an interface product and uh, this interface will have an ID as a number, a title as a string, an image as a string and it will have uh, likes as a number. So this is a product that we have. Let's go back and uh, now we have to cast this product as product don't forget also to import it here so we have the key now now let's call every other variable so this is id uh, i also forgot here to put the headers so the first one is the image this is a title this is a likes and this is a action so the second one is the image so we have to put an image here with the source to be product that image and the height will be 180 this is a product title and this is a product likes for the moment I will keep uh, actions to an empty TD now let's see it on the browser so we retrieved products with images so for some reason uh, the image doesn't show so this uh, site lorem pixel doesn't work uh, currently for me but if it works it will show images here so this is how we retrieve products and uh, we loop them to show them as a table now let's delete a product in the actions here we need to add some more html so I will add this HTML which is just a button delete so we want to delete a product so first let's create a delete function I will call it de deal not delete because it's a keyword so this function will accept an ID as a number and we have to call it here so to do it we have to add a non-click listener and uh, we have to call a delete function with the product id 
So this is how we call uh, the delete function for a different product. Now that uh, we have the delete product, we have to make it asynchronous and we have to call our backend to remove the product. So to do it, we have to uh, make an await method fetch. So I will copy this part here. So in this case now we need to pass uh, the ID. So I will convert the quotes here to this kind of quotes. I don't know the name of these quotes, but uh, with these quotes you can add uh, variables to the string, which is the ID in this uh, case. Uh, this is not a get request. This is a get request, but we want to make a delete request here, so we have to pass some parameters. So the method will be delete. So with this function call, we will delete a product in the backend, but we need also to remove it from the front end. So we have to call set products again. So set products and we have to get all the products except the product that have this ID. So we have to get all the products and we have to filter them and uh, the filter will have the product as a product ID. So product is a product here and uh, we will filter all the products that have the ID different than this ID. We can keep it a one-liner here. So this means that we are getting all the products except this product ID and we are setting it so the table refreshes itself. One last change that we need here is to add a confirmation since we don't want to delete uh, products directly, so we add a new condition here, window.confirm. Are you sure you want to delete this product? And we close all what we did uh, inside this if statement. So once we click delete, the browser will ask this question. If we type yes, then the product will, will be deleted. Let's see it on the browser. So I will delete product number four. When I click, I'll get a question. Are you sure you want to delete this product? I type OK. Then we can see product with ID four is removed. If I refresh, it's also removed in the backend. So this is how we delete products. Now let's create some products. First, let's create a new React component. Products create. And this will be a normal React component. And uh, now that we created it, we have to add it to our router. So the route for this uh, uh, component will be admin products slash create and this will be products create let's make every component exact so we don't have any problems this also uh, now let's go to our products we will add here this HTML, it's just a link, and uh, we will have to change this anchor link to a link from React Router DOM. So I automatically imported it, but you have to do it on your own. So import link from React Router DOM, and this link will redirect to admin. products 
create. Let's add a slash in front. And uh, we don't need these curly braces, so this is the link that we want. So if we see the browser, we can see an add button here that when we click, we go to the products create page, which is empty right now. So in the products create, let's convert this div to just a wrapper and uh, now it looks better. Inside here, I will create this simple form that uh, accepts only a title and an image and a button to save it. So it will look like this. Now let's make this form work. First, we have to create uh, variables from the state for the title and the image. So we'll create the title, set title from use state and the default uh, value will be empty. Let's do the same for the image. So this is image and this is set image. Now that we got uh, the variables, we can uh, set it directly here. So when we change this input, we have to set the title. So we had an on change listener here and uh, the event will call set title and the value will be event that target that value. This means every time this input changes, so when we type here, we will set the title. So let's do it the same for the image. So on change event will call set image event that target that value. Now in this title and image, we got the values that the user set. So we are ready to use them in uh, when the form is submitted. So let's add an on submit uh, call here. Let's create also the function submit. And uh, for the moment, just console log the title and the image. And uh, on the submit here, we will call the submit function. So let's test it on the browser. Let's inspect. And uh, let's put the title here and an image. Save. I saw a console log, but immediately the page refreshed. So that is a problem. So we have to prevent that. And to do it, we have to call here to, uh, to add an event parameter here and to call uh, event that uh, prevent default. TypeScript wants us to type the event here. So synthetic. event. Let me type it synthetic event. So that will prevent the page refresh. So if we try it again, we can see that we console log uh, test and test. Now we are ready to call the backend to create our product. So let's make this function asynchronous. And here we'll call wait fetch HTTP localhost port 8000 slash API slash products. And we have to add some uh, options. The first one is a method which is a post method. The second one is the headers. So this is a HTTP request. So we want to work with uh, JSON. So we have to add content type application slash JSON. And uh, we need also to send the data, which are these 
two variables that we have here so we have to send them in the body and we have to stringify them so json stringify because it accepts a string we want to send an object so we need to add the title here and the image not that this title here is the same as title title here but to keep it short and simple we can use it like this now we can create products with this request we need uh, one more change because uh, we want to redirect to the products once uh, we submit the form so let's create another state here uh, I will call it redirect and set redirect use state and the default value will be false here I will add the condition if redirect we want to return redirect so let's import it so import redirect from react router dom we want to redirect to admin slash products and once we create a product we want to set redirect to true so this means if this is successful we redirect to the main table let's try it out let's create a product title image save so if we redirect it means it works so we can see it did work so let's create another one with a correct image and let's put a title here uh, bird so we can see this is working correctly and the redirect works correctly now we want to edit products to edit products is almost the same as creating products so I will copy the products create component and uh, paste it and change the name to products edit let's rename also this variable products edit and uh, rename this also products edit so now that we created products edit let's add it also to our routes let's duplicate this and the route now is different so we need to go to admin slash product slash id slash edit we need the id of the product that we want to edit and the component is products edit now we need to get the product from this id that we are fetching but first let's go to our products and here we need to add another link let's copy the link for the delete and name it edit we don't need an on click listener here but we have to rename this to a link and we have to redirect to the path that we want to redirect is admin slash products slash the id so product.id here slash edit and don't forget to end it with the link here so this button will appear on the table now so along with uh, the delete button now we have an edit button let's click the edit button and uh, right now nothing happens so i made a mistake a spelling mistake here so it's products here let's go back and type edit again let's refresh just in case so this is the product edit form now we have a product with id number two we have to set the title and the image for the product with id number two so to do it let's go to products edit now we have to call use effect and uh, 
inside here we need to call our backend for uh, that product so like we did before I will open two braces here and make an async function so this is my way of calling uh, an async function inside use effect inside here we need to call the backend so response is equal to wait fetch let me copy this uh, part here so I will use these braces now we need the ID of the product so we have to get the product with the ID that we got from the URL to get it we have to add the props here and this time is props with reference and uh, based on the props now the id is props match params dot id so the id here corresponds to this id here so the the actual name and to get the query params we have to use pro props match params now we get the response let's get also the product which is equal to a weight response that JSON once we got the product we have to set the title and the image based on this product so set title to product dot title set image product dot image we can cast this product as a product here since uh, it is a product so let's see how this looks on the browser now and this is not working because we forgot to add something else we set the values but uh, this doesn't mean that the inputs will reflect that value so we have to add here a default value for the title same for the other input so default value will be image here now once this change uh, the input will change also now we can see the data are pre-filled based on the product so if I change this from number 2 to number 1 we can see we have different values the last change we need is to change this fetch now uh, this now is a different URL we'll call API product slash uh, props match params that ID and the method is put all of the other things are the same now let's test it on the browser so I will change the image to this image and I will say updated title for the product with ID 1 let's save it now I'm redirected and we can see a new image and an updated title so this is how we update products now let's uh, complete the main app so this should be a list of products so let's create products from the state so products set products equals to use state and the products will be an empty array in the beginning now we have to get all the products so we have to use use effect an empty array uh, uh, function sorry and this will be an empty array inside here we'll call our backend so this will be an async function we'll get a response from fetch http localhost port 8001 now so before it was 8000 now it's 8001 
API slash products. Once we get the response, we have to get the data, which is equal to await response.json. I forgot await here. And in the end, we have to set the products to this data that we got. Now we set the products, we have to loop them here. So this is the HTML that we want to loop. So products map, we have to get every product and return this HTML. So this needs a key, product.id. This uh, needs the product to be cast to product. So let's make the other changes now. First, we need an image here. So let's write an image tag with uh, the source to be product that image height will be 180 this is the product title here here we need to only one button which is like and uh, this is a number of likes so it's not minutes this should be likes, likes. So that's it. Let's see how it looks like. Let's go to the main app. And this is what it looks like. So we have only two images that work because the other that don't work. But this is the main idea. Now let's make this like function work. So Let's add a non click here. On click. And this will call a function like. So this will be like this like with the product ID. Let's make the like function. This will have an ID as a number. So this works fine. Now let's complete the like function. Let's make this asynchronous here. And this will call our backend. Here we need to await fetch the URL is almost the same here. Let's change it to these brackets and uh, the endpoint is API slash product slash the ID that we got as a parameter slash like. And this will be a post request. We need to also to send uh, the some data, but uh, in this case, we don't need any data. So we need only to send the headers, which is content type application slash json. Uh, usually the post requests have some data but in this case we don't have any. Now that we like a product we also need to update uh, this uh, html so we need to set the products again. So to set the products we need to loop uh, and change all uh, the current product. So set products, products, map, and for every product we have to make a condition now. If this product that ID is equal to this ID that we got as a parameter here, then product that likes will increase. In the end, return the product. So this means that only this product with this ID 
will increase the likes. Now we are having an error, like uh, argument of type product is not assignable of parameter of type set state action never. Uh, this means that uh, when we initialize the products here, this is never, uh, this uh, TypeScript interprets this as never, like this. So to fix this problem, we have to manually cast this empty array as product array. So this is an empty array, but as a product array. And immediately we see that we don't have an error anymore. So this is how we fix TypeScript errors by casting uh, the products directly. Let's open the browser now and uh, if we like a product we can see the number of likes increases and that's it. It's very, it's very simple. So this was our app that we wanted to build and uh, I hope you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you.